Hey guys, LP here from Techno Buffalo, and today we're putting Windows 7 to some benchmarks and comparing it to its predecessors, Windows Vista and Windows XP. In my previous videos, we checked out some of the basic features as well as some of the more advanced features of Windows 7, but in this video, it's all about performance. We're going to start off with some synthetic benchmarks and finish off with a comparison of Windows Vista and Windows 7 running a very cool game called Batman Arkham Asylum. SuperPi is a very popular benchmark software that tells how fast your processor calculates Pi to a predetermined number of digits. It's basically a pretty straightforward benchmark tool that tells how fast your CPU crunches the numbers. It's a very simple piece of software, but it's a very cool benchmark tool. Even my wife got excited when I showed her this. Okay, she wasn't too excited, but in my benchmark I'll be using a 1 million digit test. And here we go. Pretty exciting stuff. I won't be using the current score in the comparison because the recording software I'm using is taking up a significant amount of resources. So I took the liberty and ran the benchmark without the recording software running in the background on the three operating systems. And here are the results. Okay, the time it took Windows XP to calculate 1 million digits of Pi occurred in 15.698 seconds. Vista crunched the numbers in 15.989 seconds and Windows 7 in 15.933 seconds. Not very significant variations between the three, but still Windows XP was the fastest by a third of a second. Windows 7 comes in second and Vista third. In the next benchmark I tested hard drive read speed with HD Tune, which calculates the minimum, maximum and average read speeds and random access time of your hard drives. The test itself takes a few minutes, so I'm going to skip forward in time for your viewing pleasure. Okay, the tests are now complete, and for this HD Tune benchmark, I tested the read speeds of my Western Digital Caviar Black hard drives, which are running in a RAID 0 configuration, so they will be getting a higher average read speed than off a single hard drive. As you can see, the average read speed on Windows XP is excellent but the process usage on Windows XP is significantly higher than on Windows Vista or Windows 7. The HD Tune test revealed some pretty similar results. Not very significant differences, but the test revealed that using the hard drive on Windows Vista had a slightly slower random access time and burst rate, which might translate into some less responsive use compared to Windows 7. But yet again, not very overwhelming differences between the three operating systems. In the next benchmark, I tested the system memory speed with Lavalus Everest. The Everest memory benchmark calculates the read, write, and copy speed of your memory and also times the latency. And as you can see from the bottom of the benchmark screen, I'm running some pretty standard RAM. DDR2 running in dual channel clocked at 907 MHz. Pretty much mid range in today's standards. The memory benchmark revealed that Windows Vista and Windows 7 can both handle RAM a bit faster than the good old Windows XP can. Vista is about 50 megabytes faster in read speed and 80 megabytes faster in write speed compared to Windows XP. And it's nice to see that Windows 7 is even faster than Vista, even though the differences are pretty much incremental. In the next test, I use FutureMark's very popular gaming benchmark, 3DMark Vantage. The benchmark features various kind of 3D graphics and physics tests that really push your graphics card and your CPU to the max. For the benchmark, I used the August 209 Catalyst drivers, so the playing field between Vista and Windows 7 should be quite equal. And the results are as such. Windows 7 came out with a score that is about 200 points more than on Windows Vista. Although the scores in the CPU tests were about equal in Vantage, Windows 7 scored better in the GPU tests. Again, not a massive victory for Windows 7, but a 200 point gain in 3D Mark Vantage is definitely welcome in my books. So if you're a PC guy like me, you probably run the occasional benchmark to see how fast your system setup is. I'm curious to what kind of scores you guys are getting, for example, in Vantage and SuperPi. So if you want, you can post your system specs and your scores in the comments. Alrighty, the last benchmark of the day is a real world gaming benchmark using Batman Arkham Asylum. And for this, I used the benchmark tool in Fraps, which is one of the best applications for checking out just how fast games run on your PC. While this benchmark probably isn't scientifically accurate because I could not play through the same sequence in the exact same way, but it still gives a pretty good picture of gaming speed 
on Windows 7 compared to Windows Vista. I use the Catalyst 9.8 drivers on both Vista and Windows 7, and as you can see the scores are quite similar. The game does run a couple of frames faster on Windows 7, but the difference is definitely negligible, and you won't notice the difference while playing the game. So if you're expecting games to be running a lot faster on Windows 7, you will be a bit disappointed, but the truth is that if you want games to run faster on your PC, there are no magic tricks. You're going to have to upgrade your hardware. And this is one of the reasons why PC gaming is considered a dying breed, at least by some. The high-end gaming graphics card will cost you around 500 bucks, which is a bit much when game console prices have come down to almost half of that. I recently played through Arkham Asylum on the PS3, and I was surprised to see how well it compared to the PC version in graphics. Of course the frame rate and resolution weren't up to the PC version, but this game looks great on all platforms. Been busy. These poor and I have to say it was one of the chance. best games I've played in recent times. It's a nice mix between God of War and Metal Gear Solid. To sum up this benchmark video, I was a bit surprised to see that Windows Vista held up against Windows 7 as well as it did in my benchmarks. Even though it did score lower against Windows 7 in pretty much all the benchmarks, the differences really were not anything to throw a party over. So if you're looking to upgrade to Windows 7, it pretty much comes down to functionality and features. So what do you guys think? I've shown you the features and ran the test. Is Windows 7 something you're looking forward to? I've personally been pleased with the beta, but the price is still a bit of a punch in the face. And actually a sucker punch for us beta testers. But that's about it for this video. Catch you later. LP from Techno Buffalo signing out.